What's going on, Average Joes? Today, I finally wanted to talk about one of my favorite series, Silo Saga. So I've been making a lot of lists lately over the last couple of months and weeks. And at, it's going to turn a certain point where on a lot of my lists are going to be a lot of the same series and books uh, because I like them so much. And I'm also in the process of creating a top 10 fantasy and sci-fi list. So my top 10 series, uh, somebody mentioned it and uh, I, I wanted to take some time to actually do that. And I'm combining fantasy and sci-fi because I haven't read too, too much sci-fi. But Silo Saga, spoiler alert, is going to be on that list because it is one of my favorite all-time reads. So I wanted to um, pick and choose some of the series that I talk about for why you should read. And I don't want to do that for every series that I read. I, I kind of want to only do it for ones that are a little bit lower or under the radar or ones that I just really love. Um, if, if there's already some series, so like Faithful and the Fallen is totally a number one series for me. I might not do a video on that because there's it's it's gotten a lot of hype lately and there's so many other people that have talked about it and talked it up. So um, that's fine. But Silo Saga is one of those that almost nobody has talked about. Honestly, uh, Moid over at Media Death Cult is the first person I've seen that come up on their list and has actually talked about them and um, to, to really like them. I've Googled some and there's only like two other videos on YouTube and they're years old. So... Um, and for, and for Moy, he has it in his top 10 of all all time sci, um, sci fi series, which is kind of a big deal. He is like the sci fi guy. He makes his top 100 lists of sci fi books and all those things. And to be so high on his list is, is pretty awesome. And that that's a, a, I mean, should be a big enough endorsement for people to check it out. But I wanted to do another one because I've noticed some people have been talking about it or like picking it up. And it's like, hey, yeah, somebody sent me wool or I got wool, but you know, we'll see what happens. So, I wanted to give my official why you should read the Silo Saga. So to start off, what's it about? As vague of a picture, vague as, as a clear, vague picture, if that makes any sense, because there are a lot of twists and turns and uh, things to discover in this series. But I also want to tell you enough of what it is about. And even if I tell you a lot about <clears throat> what happens in book one, there's so much that happens throughout the series and toward the end of the book, first book and and so on that you're, you're still going to have a, lot, a whole lot to discover and things to figure out. So Silo Saga, as you can imagine, it takes place in a silo. There has been a um, big nuclear fallout or some sort of disaster so that people have had to retreat to live in this silo. The silo itself is 100 plus stories deep. So picture a giant skyscraper, like the biggest skyscraper you can think of, but invert it to be down into the ground and probably wider and like branching off like uh, floors kind of, but it is um, 100 levels deep. So it is huge. And a part of that 100 levels deep, now are the 100 levels are uh, in society are the different jobs and roles and what everybody does. And there is very much a class system in here. So Silo, I would, I would uh, classify it as a dystopian. So it is technically sci-fi because it takes place in the future and technology is a bit of a, a of a surrounding thing here but it is very much dystopian uh because you're living they're living in a silo there is a class system so toward the top levels are where you know some of the leaders and lawmakers and like the mayor lives and then as you go down there's like farmers and schools and medical and then as you go down further are like the grunts the me mechanical the uh electrical and all those things as you go farther and farther down and they all wear uh, overalls or, or coveralls and the coveralls are different colors depending on what jobs they are. So you can identify somebody of what they do and, and, and uh, whatnot. So kind of like a red rising, but it's not like as clear of a hierarchy. There's not like a set color that's in charge. It's just like this color is IT or this color is a politician type, type person. Um, but they're still more, more or less equal. Either way, there's a class system and, a, and clear distinct lines in between them. Uh, a lot of times people will stay within the floors that they live in. And on the very top floor, there is a single view camera that looks out into the world and you just see a barren wasteland. And this camera uh, needs to be cleaned every few years, however many years. And whenever, you know, into control their popular, or not really control their population, but part of the society, 
if you are convicted of a really bad crime or like death row or whatever it is, um, or they just need somebody after so many years, you are sentenced to go out into the world and clean the lens. And that is why the first book is called Wool, because you are sent out in the world in, uh, in, outside with a piece of wool to clean the lens. And then since you're out in the world and all of the uh, uh, contaminants and, and, and stuff going on, it, will, it decomposes their suits and they die. So you are sent out into the world to clean the camera and then die. And people, people, can, people will go up there and watch this happen, watch the cleaning and then watch the person die because they're on camera. They'll, they'll, they'll clean it and then they'll try and walk and then they won't get very far and then just die. Um, so that's not really very spoilery. It's going to happen very early on. It's one of the first things that do, do happen. Uh, the, the first uh, novella. So these books were originally um, made in novellas. And back in like 2010 or 11, the first novella came out. And then it was really a smash hit on Kindle at the time. And then Hugh Howey decided to write more novellas. And that is what Wool is. Wool is a collection of five novellas. So it is an omnibus. And then after that, it got picked up for, for from a publisher. And he made it into a trilogy. So he, made, he read, read the next book. And then they wrote the third book and uh, how it all came together, which I think is really fascinating because it doesn't he, it doesn't completely read like um, he didn't have that full of picture in sight. He definitely had this in, in mind, but he just started off small uh, on one very, very small scope of what it was going to be like. And it was fantastically done. So in the first novel or in the first book, you are which I, when I say book, I mean uh, the first omnibus. You're introduced to a few characters and given the scope and the lay of the land of how the silo operates. And then toward the end, you are introduced to a character that will be a main focal point for the rest of the series. And then she becomes a, in a she put, gets put into a leadership role and starts to uncover things or question why things are happening. And there's secrets that get discovered and she starts raising questions. And that's about all I can say. But she gets on, uh, gets gets a whiff of something on a trail, and she get, goes and starts to discover a lot. So that is briefly briefly what it is about. That is the setting. Uh, this is one of those times where the setting, the silo itself, kind of is a character in itself. It and that's how that's how key of a of an element it is. As I said, people will travel up as almost like a pilgrimage once, maybe even once in their lifetime, to go all the way to the top. To see the view screen, just to see outside, and then and then go down. It's like a, um, you know, only a couple people do it, or they only do it once or twice, depending on how far down they are. Um, when they go on vacation, they might go up thirty levels, and there's like places to stay, like little, I don't know about hotels, but little places to stay every few floors. And it's like, hey, you know, if you're not living down in the the '90s, you might go up to the '60s or or '50s because there's new stuff there that you don't know about. And then that's like where markets are as well. So. It, it, that's how it, it basically functions, which is pretty interesting. But there is mystery all over the silos. So if you like a mystery and discovery, if you like conspiracy theories, if you, I mean, if you like um, the doomsday type uh, books as well, or, or shows or anything like that, this is definitely one to check out. It's not very heavy in sci-fi elements. It is technically sci-fi, but it's just whatever technology they had at the time of building the silos is what they have now. And it's almost like going back. It's very industrial-esque. It does kind of make you wonder because of, in a sense, this could be realistic in a way. You know, bunkers are already built now. Uh, there are some bunkers built around the world. There are doomsday shelters. Um, in South Dakota, they have converted an old munition storage depot um, from like World War II. They can they converted all of those munition storages because they are like cement thick and then like under, uh, under grass, um, two, uh, houses you can buy, you can buy like a $40,000 fully renovated kitted out munitions storage shelter. And you can either live there full time, which some people do, or you can just save that for a rainy day. And in case crap hits the fan, you can go and live in your fallout shelter and, uh, you know, sustain life there for however many months or how long it is so yeah these things do exist but not to this magnitude so it's like Hugh Howey took the idea of a silo a fallout doomsday shelter and just times it by 10 he just made it ginormous because of these giant this giant skyscraper in the ground 
and, and how society would function, how it's how it's layered, what what might people be, be covering up to keep society at bay, to keep you know all of these things in check. And at the at the time you start with the series, they've been in the silo for hundreds of years. It's not just been like 50, 60 years. It's like multiple generations to the point where nobody knows what happened before. Nobody, the, the, the memories of before and when they first went into the shelter have completely fallen off so that it's almost like myth now for how life used to be when the, the, the silo first happened. So it is way, way down uh, the line. And it makes you wonder how the, how they, how they've already forgotten this and what, uh, why haven't stories been written or told, which is more to discover. And, you know, when somebody is sent out to do cleaning to the cleaning of the lens, if you're sent to death, why would you clean the camera? That's also a mystery. There's all sorts of things to discover and it's pretty fascinating. So as I mentioned, this started off as a self-published novella. And then he just wrote a couple of novellas and that made the first omnibus. Well, after the series was done, it got such a big, it was such a big hit and got such a following that there is a lot of fan fiction written for, for the silo series. And that is pretty uh, awesome in itself. I've read some of them, some are hit or miss, but there are some really good ones on there. And it just shows how much you can do with this world that he created with this silo. And I might even go back and look for more fan fiction because there is a decent amount of it out there. Uh, it's also at one point got uh, pitched and almost made into a show or a movie. I see there's a trailer on, on um, YouTube from like 2011 or 2012. And I don't know if it actually got made or if it was just like the pitch, like a, like a pilot or something. But I think this should do totally be a show that could be made because of how much goes on here. So that's, those are the main points of why I think you should read it. Another one that I think is a positive point, which some people might actually not like. Uh, so this could be a, if, if you don't like it, but I do like this. And that is there's time hopping. And uh, not only is there like you get a, a view of past and present, but the first book, uh, Wool, the first omnibus takes place chronologically in the middle. And then book two, uh, shift, you go back in time to when the silos were first created. And even when you go back in time to that, to the creators, there's time hopping within that first book. And it still takes place way before the, the second book. And then by the end of the second or the first book, and by the end of the second book, it's building up until it meets to about the same time as the second book. And then the third book is the combination of both. So that could throw some people off. And the fact that it was started off as novellas um, to be written like that before the, the big story, it, some people might find the pacing or, or uh, those things a little bit confusing. I know my wife, when she read it, she had a little bit of issues of that hopping a little bit, but I, I really liked it. I, I enjoyed it a lot. I think it was very interesting at the time. And it's something that I'm noticing now that I really like in series because there's another series I'm reading that does the same thing where the first book chronologically is in the middle and then you go back in time. So I think it's a, it's a new way to tell a story versus starting to just doing it all chronologically. And I find it cool, but some people might not like that sort of storytelling. So just a little bit of, a, I guess, a warning there, but I think it is worth it because of how all of the secrets um, get discovered and how everything aligns and comes together. As someone who does not reread books, I've mentioned this before, I have never re reread a book in my life, but on my very, very short list of potentials to reread, Silo would be on there for sure because I read this back in 2012 and absolutely loved it. And um, to hear that other people still like it and you know, my, my wife just read it and she liked it. So I, I kind of get the wondering of if it'll hold up, but I still, the fact that it's been like 10 years, I think I, I'd still have surprises and things that I forget and things that I didn't realize or connections that I could make because I know the big twists but it is definitely on uh, one of those lists if I were to ever uh, revisit it. So that is why you should read Silo Saga, in my opinion. I'm wondering if this is on your radar, if it uh, appeals to you, if you um, are considering reading it, what you think about it, what you think of these types of stories, or if you have any other further questions about Silo Saga, let me know and I will um, uh, respond to you in the comments. There was a, uh, Hugh Howie did try to continue the series after it, there's like a, a standalone book that happens way after the third book. And it's, it's, it's not that great. It's just okay. Uh, so I wouldn't really consider that in the silo saga, but 
the fan fiction is still very good. So let me know what you think and if this is something that has been on your radar. <laughs>